Hey, hey everybody. Um, today's lesson is going to be on stereo nets. And we've practiced this before in class, uh, but I wanted to walk you through how to do it. And so to start off, uh, you're going to take your tracing paper and overlay it on your equal area stereo net. Uh, and I, there are a lot of different ways you can do this, a lot of different formats that people use. Uh, but what I like to do first is make marks at north, south, east, and west, and labeled it at least north, um, so you have reference points. So I'm going to do north and south and east and west. Right, so I've got those marked there. Uh, you might be able to see that. Know how clear that is. Um, so you do that first, right? And now we're going to trace the great circle, or sorry, the primitive circle, which is the exterior circle. It is the equivalent of the outside of the circle on a beach ball diagram, which you've drawn, we've used before. This doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but it just gives you a very good reference sort of place for your stereo net. Some people like to be really precise and some people don't, and that's fine. Either way, as long as it's clean enough and precise enough when you plot your points, um, the things are accurate. All right, so, you know, it's got our circle now plotted. I'm not going to plot the point in the middle uh, because you kind of don't have to because there's a hole in the paper there. All right, so now let's do a hypothetical strike and dip. And the first one we're going to do uh, is going to be a relatively simple one. So let's say, and we'll do this, we'll do one in azimuth and we'll do one in quadrant. Let's start with quadrant first. And so I'm going to give you a number. We're going to do north 45 east for the strike. And then the dip, when we're doing right hand rule, is always going to be 90 degrees to the right from strike, um, at least the quadrant that the dip is in. Normally when you see dip, you just see the amount of dip, so the deviation, uh, you know, like, if this is horizontal, dip is going to range between 0 degrees to 90 degrees down, right? So you can have a dipping plane anywhere in that range. You shouldn't have a dip greater than 90. If you do, it's dipping in the opposite direction. So there's something there. All right, so north 45 east, and let's just make an arbitrary dip. Let's say this is a normal fault, and we'll make it dip of 60 degrees. And because I said it has to be right hand rule, if we're going to plot in the northeast quadrant, that means dip is going to be in the southeast quadrant. So to fully complete the notation, it would be north 45 east, south 60, or sorry, 60 southeast. All right, so how do you plot this? So this is the primitive circle. And to plot strike, you're going to count 45 from north along that primitive circle, in this case because we're starting with north, right? So uh, north, and this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So that means 10, 20, 30, 40, 45 would be right there. So let's call this one uh, letter X uh, because I'm going to have you do A through J on your, your homework assignment. Um, so I can put a little X there to keep track of my different strikes and dips. The next step you're going to do is you're going to rotate back counterclockwise and put that X, or well, put that dot at the north. Oh, good. <laughs> Great. All right, back at it. I guess I can't bump the table at all. All right, so next thing we need to do is, um, because we're using right-hand rule, and because I said that dip is always 90 degrees from strike, so that means dip is going to be at a right angle to strike. That means dip is going to be out here, right? That's the direction of dip. And then you're going to count in 60 degrees from there. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Right. So that's that's where our dip plots. Now I'm going to ask you in your homework to also do pole to plane. And to do that, you're going to count 90 degrees from this point to the left. One, two, 
sorry, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And I'm going to mark that with an X as well, so I can keep track of the pulls to the planes and also the strikes. So the strikes will all be on the outside, um, and then the pulls to planes will be these dots in the middle. The dip, we're not worried about the dot, because now what we're going to do is we're going to trace from that dot up to our X, and also down to the south pole. And now we can rotate it back to north, and you've got your normal fault dipping 60 degrees to the southeast. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's do another one, and we'll do this one fairly close. Um, but we're going to do this other one in. Hmm, let's do let's do for y. What we'll do is we'll do south 45 west and 60 degrees. And now if if we're south 45 west, um, what that's going to then imply is that the dip, if we keep going clockwise with right-hand rule, the dip has to be in the northwest. So it'll be 60 degrees northwest for the dip. So let's try this one. So when we're in quadrant notation, the way to do this, we start at the south, because that's what it says. It says south. Um, the thing falling down really jacked this up. OK. <laughs> um, so south, and we're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 5. Make sure I did that right. 10, 20, 30, 40, 5. And like I intended, it plots at the same place where this line intersects because they're going to be dipping in opposite directions but parallel to each other. Um, so this is going to be Y. I'll mark that with a Y. And then to be consistent, you're going to. You don't have to do this, but just for simplicity's sake, let's do it this way. Um, I'm going to rotate that Y all the way back to north, so around counterclockwise. I don't know if it matters which direction you go, but let's just do it counterclockwise. And now we're going to count in 60. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. That's going to be your dip point. If we do pull the plane, it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Plot that there and put a little Y there. Some of your letters are going to be upside down when you rotate it back. That's fine. Um, I'll be able to figure it out. And then you trace in the dip again. So got that one up to there. And that one down to there. So I can rotate this all the way back around. And you've got your, your two dipping faults. Um, keep in mind that this one is dipping in that direction. And this one's dipping in that direction. So we have our northwest dip for Y and our southeast dip for X. Now let's do one in, um, in regular azimuth notation because you might have a compass that works that way and that's the way most compasses work um, and hypothetically let's throw out uh, let's say 330 degrees and let's make the dip something shallow uh, yeah something shallow like 20 degrees and if it's 360 degrees you're coming all the way around to make that all right, so um, west is 270, so that's 280, 290, 300, 310, 320, 330. Should be there. If it's striking that direction, it's going to have to be dipping 90 degrees from that, so it's going to be dipping towards 
the northeast, but you don't, if you're using right hand rule, you actually don't have to write all that material, and that makes your notes a lot easier. I technically am going to prefer, like in real life, I prefer azimuth because then you can just write, uh, if you're entering it into a computer, you can just write 330 and you can write 20, and if you're using right hand rule, you don't have to add any numbers, which makes computer database entry a lot easier. Okay. So 360 degrees, um, and it's going to be dip in that direction. So you, know, you can just rotate it up to there, uh, mark that Z, and then we're going to count in just 20. So from here, so 10, 20. Having trouble seeing these, but there's our 20. Pull to plane then would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. All right, so I can mark that with a Z. And then I can trace. Up to there. And down to here. And reminder that your dip is going that direction. And then you can rotate it that way. And there we go. We've got three strikes and dips. And that's all for this lesson. Uh, so what I want you to do, I'm going to, you should have gotten an email with the exercise. Um, you should watch this video and then you should try out the, I believe, 10 samples that I've listed there. Now I'm going to have you put the dip quadrant in for all of these. So you're going to go in and based on the strike, I want you to figure out what quadrant the dip should be in. So that's part of the exercise as well. Uh, and when you finish that up, you can go ahead and take a really good picture of it. And by that, I mean one that isn't all shadowy and faded out or too bright and contrasty where I can't see anything um, and washed out. So take a nice picture. Uh, just light it from the side, ideally, so there's no shadows on it. Make sure it's well lit, preferably with kind of a yellowish light. Uh, take a picture digitally and then send your answers to me uh, just so I can give you some credit for completing this exercise. So uh, otherwise, keep up with the uh, lecture slides. Uh, I'm not going to be recording lectures for this course since it's a ton of work and I'm not really being paid for this class. So um, as an independent study, this is on you uh, to learn some of these things. But I do want you to do these assignments so I can give you some credit for it. It makes it easier to get those grades in. All right. So uh, good luck, everybody. Send me questions if you have them. Uh, you can email me. We can set up Zoom meetings technically if, if you need to, uh, where I can talk to you on the webcam, either at work where I am now or uh, for my iPad at home, assuming the Internet works. Uh, so uh, good luck. Hope you're staying healthy. And that's the end of this video.